shingles infection is caused by a bacteria known as Streptococcus equi. Uh, what it normally does in, in the typical case is that it is uh, taken in uh, to the oral mucosa or inspired in, but typically it's most likely taken in uh, the oral mucosa due to uh, being exposed to the contaminant, usually water, feed tubs, inanimate objects. And this particular bacteria sets up housekeeping in the retropharyngeal lymph nodes in the back of the throat of the horse. Um, uh, typically you see signs where these retropharyngeal lymph nodes will go ahead and enlarge and finally will rupture and they look like almost like a like a chipmunk, you know, almost like they have a swelling right below their jawline and they'll go ahead and abscess out there. If they do not abscess out through the skin there, which they typically don't always do, uh, you'll see drainage where they'll drain internally th in the upper airway and they'll, you'll see discharge out their nose. Uh, this will usually occur somewhere in the order of about four or five days after exposure to an infected case. And you'll go through this episode for roughly oh, four or five days till, till the, the horse essentially builds up enough of their own immunity. And uh, they'll have a high fever, they'll have discharge, they'll have, uh, you, know, you know, basically discomfort. Uh, for a number of days and, and what I normally do is we just put them on butte and I don't put them on antibiotics because uh, that can t uh, Essentially create a bigger problem for you where it'll encapsulate the streptococcus create a systemic uh, Infection or septicemia where it disseminates through a lot of other lymphoid tissue throughout the body and create Abscesses that'll go ahead and open and drain in the inguinal area up over the hips down in the chest region, this sort of thing, which is known as bastard strangles. And the reason that term is used is because it has the ability to disseminate and, and rupture out in other areas that it doesn't normally, uh, uh, would normally uh, cause abscesses. Um, as a rule, it just is a bit of an inconvenience and it can be extremely uh, 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 contagious to other animals. So what we try to do is we try to isolate that animal and stop it from exposing you know, any of the objects, the feed tubs, whatnot, water, that that horse would be exposed to in order to, you know, to, to keep the infection in check. Uh, what we do have the luxury of uh, as, a, as a combatant to it now is we do PCR or DNA testing from the discharge in the upper airway. And we'll go ahead and flush the guttural pouches, which we found that the retropharyngeal lymph nodes tend to be attached right to, and this, uh, this particular bacteria sets up housekeeping in, and we'll go ahead and flush that area with a penicillin derivative or gel that stays in there long term. And then we'll go ahead and keep flushing it until we do have a clean PCR that we know that there's no more DNA from that particular bacteria in the horse. Once we do that, we can go ahead and expose that horse to other horses again, and it's no longer a problem. So we used to believe it was in the soil and things of this nature. Now we know that the guttural pouches of the horse, which are analogous to the eustachian tubes in a that's a big dilation in the upper airway of the horse back in the recesses of their airway. Uh, it's a big pouch that has a, in the capacity of about a half a liter in each uh, one of these pouches to where this bacteria gets in there and sets up housekeeping. And essentially, unless you flush it and get rid of it, it's going to be there and it can potentially be a carrier and expose other horses to it for a long time till you address it. How important is it for somebody, if, <clears throat> if they have more than a few horses, to take a horse like that and get them isolated? From the other horses. Oh, it's, it's paramount. You have to isolate them as soon as you identify one horse. And the biggest problem is by the time that you've recognized it, usually you've exposed all of them anyway as a rule, or you've exposed quite a few of them. The horses next door to them because horses tend to be very social and they'll touch each other, breathe on each other. So as soon as you realize that you have one, that horse needs to be isolated as soon as possible to try to minimize infection. And typically you need to set up typical isolation uh, uh, protocol, meaning that that's a, the last horse fed or uh, touched or uh, exposed to the people that are working in the barn. And every time you're around that horse, uh, when you're done, you need to get out away from all the other horses, not touch them or be exposed to them again, and clean all your clothes, hands, gloves, jackets, and whatnot in order to stop contamination. That would include your boots and, uh, and or, you know, any other sort or topical or uh, clothing or anything that could have been exposed to the horse. Thank you.